the shakes of the skull caps. Bahadin Nachband was approached by the shakes of four Sufi groups in India, Egypt, Turkey, that is to say Rum, and Persia. They asked him in eloquently worded letters to send them teachings which they could impart to their followers. Bahadin first said, What I have is not new. You have it and do not use it correctly. Therefore, you'll simply say when you receive my messages, these are not new. The sheikhs replied, With respect, we believe that our disciples will not think thus. Bahadin did not reply to these letters, but read them in his assemblies, saying, We, at a distance, will be able to see what happens. Those who are in the midst of it will not, however, make the effort to see what is happening to them. Then the sheikhs wrote to Bahadin and asked him to give some token of his interest. Bahadin sent one small skull cap for each student, telling their sheikhs to distribute them as from him, without saying what the reason might be. He said to his assembly, I have done such and such a thing. We who are far will see what those who are near to events will not see. Now, he wrote after a time to each of the sheikhs, asking them whether they had abided by his wishes and what the results had been. The sheikhs wrote, We have abided by your wishes. But as to the results, the sheikh of Egypt wrote, My community eagerly accepted your gift as a sign of special sanctity and blessing, and as soon as the caps were distributed, each person regarded them as of the greatest inner significance and as carrying your mandate. And the sheikh of the Turks wrote, on the other hand, The community regard your cap with great suspicion. They imagine that it betokens your desire to assume their leadership. Some are afraid that you may even influence them from afar through this object. There was a different result from the sheikh in India, who wrote, Our disciples are in great confusion, and daily ask me to interpret to them the meaning of the distribution of skull caps. Until I tell them something about this, they do not know how to act. The letter from the sheikh of Persia said, the result of your distribution of the caps has been that the seekers, content with what you have sent them, await your further pleasure, so that they may place at the disposal of their teaching and of themselves the efforts which should be made. Bahadin explained to an audience of hearers in Bukhara the dominant superficial characteristic of the people in the circles of India, Egypt, Turkey and Persia was, in each case, manifested by the reaction of their members. Their behavior when faced with a trivial object such as a skull cap would have been exactly the same if they had been faced with me in person or with teaching sent by me. Neither the people nor their sheikhs have learned that they must look among themselves for their choking peculiarities. They should not use these trivial peculiarities as methods to assess others. Among the disciples of the Persian sheikh, there is a possibility of understanding because they have not the arrogance to imagine that they understand that my caps will bless them, will threaten them, will confuse them. The characteristics in the other three cases are Egyptian, hope, Turkish, fear, and Indian, uncertainty. Now some of the epistles of Bahadin Nachband had meanwhile been copied as a pious act and distributed by well-meaning but unenlightened dervishes in Cairo, Hind, and the Persian and Turkey areas. They eventually fell into the hands of the circles surrounding these very sheikhs of the skull caps. Bahadin, therefore, asked one wandering calendar to visit each of these communities in turn and to report to him how they felt about his epistles. This man said on his return, They all said, This is nothing new. We are doing all these things already. 
Not only that, but we are basing our daily lives upon them, and by our existing tradition we keep ourselves occupied day in and day out with remembrance of these things. El Shah Bahadin Naqshband thereupon called all his disciples together. He said to them, You who are at a distance from certain events connected with these four shakely groupings will be able to see how little has been accomplished by the working of the knowledge among them. Those who are present there have learned so little that they can no longer profit from their own experiences. Where, therefore, is the advantage of the daily remembrances and struggle? Make it a task to collect all the available information about this event. Inform yourselves of the whole story, including the exchange of letters and what I have said, as well as the report of this calendar here. Bear witness that we have offered the means whereby others could learn. Cause this material to be written down and studied, and let those who have been present witness it, so that, God willing, even reading about it might prevent such things happening frequently in future, and might even enable it to come to the eyes and ears of those who were so powerfully affected by the action of inactive skullcaps. The Wine Flask The story is told in the assemblies of the wise that there was once a man who wished to entertain a friend with the greatest hospitality of which he was capable. When he and his friend had been sitting for some time after dining, the host said, How do you feel about drinking some wine to stir the dullness of our thinking and to stimulate the sharpness of our feelings? His guest agreed. Now that man had in his house only one flask of wine, and he told the guest this. But when he sent his son, who was afflicted by the malady of double vision, for the wine, the son returned and said, Father, there are two bottles. Which of them do you want me to bring? Ashamed that his guest should think that he was not giving him his all, the father replied, Break the one bottle and bring us the other here. The youth, of course, cast a rock upon the one and only bottle, with the result that he imagined that he had unintentionally broken both. And therefore there was no wine for host or guest that night. The guest thought that the youth was a fool when he was only suffering from a disability. The host's pride in his own hospitality was the cause of the destruction of the bottle. The boy was grieved that he had done something wrong. This was all because the host was afraid that if he told his guest at the outset that his son was afflicted by double vision, that it was just a pretext for not being ready to expend all his wine. <laughs>